Good evening, it's Simon here, Explosive Action, and I'm back with a Blu-ray update. Not as big as some of the previous ones, which might mean we get this under an hour, so let's get into it. Before I get into it, I'm going to complain a bit about the weather. I really like cold, and I really like rain. But we've had about six or eight weeks of rain, and that's actually starting to cause some problems. And if you look at these photos here, you'll see that I uh, had some mold on the back of one of my uh, Blu-ray DVD shelves. Uh, despite my best cleaning it keep coming back so shelf is going in the bin I'm waiting for a new one to show up very annoying now I'm gonna have to do all some all this like preventative work on uh, mold preventative paint I've got all this stuff ready to go it's all very annoying there's not much I can do because obviously I'm in a garage here but anyway bloody hell I hate mold so let's get on with this update one DVD one whole DVD and a mountain of blu-rays and it is a very good one. This is Operation Warzone, David Pryor film from 1988. Didn't even know this was on DVD. Had the VHS for a very long time. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who is a rabid for Australian VHS asked me if I had it. I said, yeah, I do, but it's David Pryor, so you know, getting it away from me is going to be pretty hard. He threw an offer at me that was very convincing. Um, and I only did that because I, I searched and found a German DVD um, of Operation Warzone. So this film came out in 1988. Somewhere between, uh, well, it's way after Deadly Prey, but it's around about, um, what are the other ones he did at that time? I can't remember. There's like three war films in a row that you know all came out about 1988. Um, and this one was pretty good. It's uh, Fritz Matthews is in it as well. Uh, this is not a Ted Pryor film. But it's um, it's quite a good one. The, the transfer is fine. It's clearly not from a VHS, but it's probably from like the original master that they used to create the VHS. So you know, it's fine. It does the job. It's clear. It's sharp. That the audio is fine. It's in English, which is good. Um, the cover's pretty generic, modern war. You know, it's, it's a shame with German DVDs. Uh, sometimes they use good art, sometimes they don't. This one not so great. And this one doesn't have a reversible F18 thingy, so I can't uh, get rid of the stupid logo. But anyway, Operation Warzone. Um, it's been around for actually like 10 years? 2009. This DVD is old. It's the only DVD I know of the film, and I didn't know it even existed. This DVD has been around longer than I've been watching David Pryor films, so... There you go. It's hard to get those. So anyway, Operation Warzone. Happy to get that one in the collection of David Pryor things. Uh, on to some more action. Um, we've got the new... It's another update. It's another Bruce Willis, Gasoline Alley. Um, haven't checked this one out yet. Since my last update, obviously that news has come around about uh, Bruce Willis's not-so-good health, uh, having sort of memory problems, and uh, the stories about him having lines fed to him on set. So... A lot of these director video films are starting to make sense now, why he's in them not very often, um, why the, uh, the focus is on other actors in the film. It makes sense, it's fine. He's earning some money for his family before he gives up acting. It's fine. What I like is I now have an end date. Uh, I, <laughs> this collection of Bruce Willis films was rapidly growing and at least I now have a point to stop and that's fine. Uh, so I haven't seen Gasoline Alley yet. Look, I expect similar. He'll probably be in it for a few minutes and the supporting cast is what will keep this film going. So it's down to if the supporting cast is good. Devon, Sawa and Luke Wilson. Uh, I recognise the face, but I don't recognise the name. So anyway, um, what do we got on this one? A sordid underbelly of LA reformed ex-con is drawn into the savage murder of four Hollywood starlets after the girl are found, girls are found naked and tied together. Last person to see one of the women at a hotel bar, he becomes the most, he becomes the prime suspect uh, for the homicide detectives working the case. Uh, audience favourite Bruce Willis is back and partners with Luke Wilson and Devin Sauer in this tough action. He partners with, so like, that could mean anything. It probably means he's got very little in it. That's all right, it's fine. If I get sub 90 minute action film with a good supporting cast and a few explosions, I'm good. Gasoline Alley. Uh, other end of the coin. My God, you couldn't get much more different. This is Communion. Um, limited Blu-ray from Shout Factory. This is a incredibly weird... What year is this? 1989. 1989. Um, Christopher Walken 
alien abduction film. It's weirder than that though. Like if you're thinking this is going to be fire in the sky. Way weirder than that. Sometimes you think it's dream sequences. There's some... Man, some of the footage in here is really, really weird. Um, the alien faces are actually very creepy. I remember seeing this probably on VHS when I was young, or at least seeing the VHS in the shelves, being freaked out by that photo or a variant of that photo. When you get into the film, um, there's yeah, it, it's all about him and his family. Uh, they've got all kinds of internal family problems, but um, this alien abduction issue starts becoming a bit of a family problem. He starts to focus on you know what's going on, how how it's happening. It's, it, it's is it dreams? Is it real? What's really interesting is the variety. Um, a little bit of a spoiler, but there's a little there's a variety of these aliens. Usually you see these things and you get the greys and you're like, yep, that's the aliens. But I'll just say there's some, there's a variety when you do see some. So it's interesting, and the dialogue that he has with the the in this these dream sequences with the aliens, some of it's just absolutely priceless stuff. Like it's it's chewing the scenery like Bruce Campbell kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it's not for everybody. This film, I will admit that when I watched it the second time, I watched the DVD actually very recently, like last year. Then I watched the blue. The blue looks great. Um, it's definitely not for everybody. It's it's way weirder than you're expecting. And Christopher Walken, he's always weird anyway. So there you go. Limited edition though, um, which unfortunately Shout are doing more of. So you can only get this direct from them. Don't know why. Like it's got a full barcode. It could easily be sold retail. They just decided not to. So that makes it limited. I'm not sure if it's one thousand or two thousand. They they seem to change it, but you can only get it direct. They only ship in the U.S. So there's a few titles in here you'll see where I've had to I go in with a mate, uh, a couple of mates. We get a bundle together and get it all shipped to the one location in the States and then get that boxed out through FedEx and it arrives in a few days. Um, and this was one of those. So Communion on Blu-ray looks great. Happy to have it. Uh, this one got some uh, Dark Force titles in here. We have The Big Sweat. And uh, this has got Robert Zadar with his big chin. I've never seen... There it is, their giant chin. I haven't seen The Big Sweat. I actually don't know much about this one at all. Uh, but I'm really keen to see it. It's uh, an Uli Lommel film from 1991. So, you know, won't hold that against it. Sometimes he's good, sometimes he's not so good. But uh, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, stars Robert Zadar of Maniac Cop fame, playing a tenacious FBI agent, tracking an ex-con just released from jail already embroiled in robbery and that happens noteworthy about big sweat is the extended ridiculously long 45 minute car chase hello half the movie is a car chase is that half the movie 87 minutes more than half the film is a car chase sold the big sweat um zadar gives his most animated memorable performance ever fantastic it does sound like he's genuinely the star of the film here so that's really good um we get a on-camera 2021 interview with production manager or restored from the 35mm OCN. So yeah, I'm keen to check out The Big Sweat. No reverse art or anything. Not sure if that's a VHS cover or not. It kind of looks like it might be. It's not brilliant, but there you go. The Big Sweat, 1991. Keen to check that out. i uh, got the latest Grindhouse double feature. We get Bog and Mako Jaws of Death. I've had, I don't know either of these films, but I've had uh, different people Either different different people telling me how good one of the other one of the films is. I've had someone tell me that Bog was great. That's why they bought it. I've had someone tell me they bought it because of Mako. So you know, based on that, both films are going to be entertaining. Uh, I think Bog might be more the most up my alley. Uh, reading the back, blah 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 propaganda from Dark Force. Blah. Uh, 1976 shark epic Mako: The Jaws of Death. Uh, blah 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 2k scan from 35mm OCN and the main feature is the 1979 drive-in monster classic BOG for the first time in high def guaranteed to please be movie lovers not much here about the films they're just uh, you know, spouting about the to grind house feature um, the cover is very blurry so they've, they've obviously not had a very good um, grind house image to work from like old newspaper clipping or something it mustn't have been very very good quality but anyway yeah it does the job it's fine 
Um, these discs can be good fun. Uh, they, they're not usually super restored. I mean, as it says here, it's presented in a new 2K scan. Um, but I doubt they've done very much to it besides that, and that's fine. You know, a few lines here and there, grindhouse double feature, it'll be fine. So you go Bog Mako. Another one from the Shout exclusives. Uh, this is Blood of the Vampire. Begins where Dracula left off. So <laughs> there you go. What do you use this? Uh, 58. It's color photos on the back, so that's actually interesting. Is it a black and white film or is it actually in color? Uh, it does say it's in color, so there you go. They're not just uh, making the photos up. Uh, not familiar with Blood of the Vampire, but it did look interesting to me. Um, it's got uh, Donald Wolfett, Barbara Shelley, Vincent Ball, and Victor Madden, directed by Henry Cass. Um, Dr. John Pierre, accused of a deadly malpractice, he is sent to a remote castle prison run by Dr. Calistratus. What a great name. Maniacal scientist who specializes in strange diseases of the blood. Upon arriving, Pierre finds himself recruited by Calistratus. I just love that word to assist with his mysterious research, but once the conscripted doctor learns the true nature of the research, he must risk everything to stop his captors' terrifying plot, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's about all I know about it. It's written by Master of Terror, Jimmy Sangster, who did Curse of Frankenstein and Dracula, Prince of Darkness. So it's good, uh, good writer behind it. And it's a moody and gothic chiller in the, in the uh, style of Hammer films, but it's not a Hammer film. It's a Universal International release from 1958. So there you go. Blood of the Vampire. Very curious to check that one out. Uh, this one I've watched. It was okay. Monster from Green Hell. Um, but yeah, look, okay is probably actually overselling it a bit. It was pretty bland, actually, this one, unfortunately, um, with an absolute shed load of stock footage. My god. From the giant uh, the year of giant bugs and atomic testing comes a low-budget howler about mutant wasps. Uh, scientists try and understand the effects of radiation on, on Earth creatures. Results bring them to an area of Africa known as Green Hell. So, like, you've got this monster from Green Hell and it makes you think, like, you're going to get this giant monster and it's from a green planet or something. No, we're just in Africa and Green Hell is just a cute name the locals gave a section of it. Uh, wasps have mutated into monsters. Jim Davis, great name, who would someday star in the TV series Dallas, plays Dr. Quint Brady. Quint. Scientist who starts the whole mess. It actually says that. Starts the whole mess. The film also stars Vladimir Sokolov from The Life of Emil Zala and Mission to Moscow as a skeptical Dr. Lorenz and Joel Flewellen, Raisin in the Sun, as Arab. Arab. What? Arabi. Who warns Brady to leave the African location? Blah blah. Look, it wasn't great. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't great. Um, it had some good scenes. The wasps were cool, but there's just so much stock footage of just tromping around Africa. Um, very little happening. I mean, if they can make 71 minutes feel long, that's not a good sign. And unfortunately, that's it. So there you go. It looks great. Um, Film Detective have done a good job on it. You know, even get a, a booklet about the thing. Perhaps I can watch it again, and you know, maybe now that I know what it is. Like seriously, this booklet's longer than the movie. Look at all this stuff. Just, just amazing. And this is talking about, um, uh, talking about the film. So, like, there's there's all kinds of cool stuff on here. Special features, um, the films of Jim Davis, career retrospective. Uh, from film historian C. Courtney Joyner and Men Behind the Monsters, an essay by Don Stradley, and that's this booklet here. So, and a commentary as well. Uh, commentary is by Stephen Bissett. It's filmed in, it's got uh, both a widescreen 185 to 1 and a full screen 133 to 1 ratio. Not sure which one is correct. I watched it in widescreen, it looked fine, so I'm presuming that's the one to watch it in. But yeah, it wasn't, wasn't particularly exciting B sci fi film, so there you go. Next one, I haven't chucked this one on yet. Hopefully it's uh, more entertaining. This is Frankenstein's Daughter. Uh, also another film detective release. Great cover on this one. 1958 again. Was that one 58? 57. 1958, 85 minutes this one. So it's a bit more of a real length movie. Uh, look at her. She lives. What a great byline. 
Dr. Dr. Oliver Frank's ambition is to continue the experiments of his late grandfather, the wicked Dr. Frankenstein. Since he has better luck in the lab than in the back seat of his car, oh, Dr. Frank usually turns the women who reject him into fodder for his experiments. Well, that's a way to way to deal with them. Um, he has special plans for his boss's young niece, Trudy. Soon, special plans. Soon, a strange female creature is running a market in modern Los Angeles. So. He's stapling to what? He's stapling together the women that say no to him. Is that what's going on here? No one is safe in Frankenstein's daughter. Not even the cool kids rocking at poolside. Oh my god! That there, that must be her there. This is amazing. Uh, commentary tracks. Um, Richard E. Kuna, filmmaker of the unknown, a Ballyhoo motion pictures documentary. So Ballyhoo Motion Pictures must be who put this thing out in the 50s. I'm not familiar with that uh, studio. Um, and John Ashley, Man from the Bees, another career retrospective uh, from the same film historian. And a uh, full color booklet. So there you go, another booklet. They really, they really are putting in um, you know, nice releases here and they're very affordable. You're not paying vinegar syndrome prices here. There you go, there's a good photo. There you go, look at those buck teeth. Look at that, my god. That looks pretty cool. So we'll see how Frankenstein's daughter goes. Hopefully it's a bit more entertaining than Monster from Greenhill. Another Shout Factory exclusive I had to get direct. This is the day the world ended. Fantastic cover, this is in a Shout, uh, sorry, a Roger Corman film. Uh, one of his early ones from 1956 produced and directed by him so not one that he's gotten someone else to direct this is a full Roger Corman picture um, never seen this one before there was an old umbrella DVD of it um, I when I was looking around I saw the cover art it has the same cover art and then some, some kind of bordering effect around it but an old umbrella DVD in this one stars uh, Richard Denning Laurie Nelson Adele Jurgens with touch Connors his first name is touch don't touch Connors, Paul Birch. Uh, after the world has been destroyed by nuclear war. Oh, that's cool. It's post apoc I like that. Uh, an unlikely group of survivors takes refuge in a mountain retreat with tensions mounting and trust all but gone. They discover that fighting each other is the least of their problems. Something outside is stalking them. Something dangerous. Something mutant. 50s sci-fi classic starring Richard Denning from Creature from the Black Lagoon and Touch Mike Connors from Mannix, don't know what Mannix is, and was produced and directed by Roger Corman. So there you go. That'll be fun. I'm assuming this one will be fun. Uh, shot in 2.01. That's very thin. Well, there you go. Uh, 2K scan from a fine grain element. A fine grain element. What is that actually trying to tell me? It means it's not a negative. I guess that means it's a, a very good quality print. Fine grain element. Uh, interview with uh, with Roger Corman, a new interview with Roger Corman. That's actually well. I'm going to put that on first because um, the man I think just turned 96 or something. He's still kicking along. It's 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 actually fantastic. It will be a very sad day when uh, when Corman goes. But um, yeah, very cool to have this one. I'm going to be checking this one out soon. I think. Uh, how long is this film? Uh, 79 minutes, so quite a short one. So there you go. From 1955, day the world ended. Very cool. Uh, this one was fairly entertaining. Um, keep your expectations low. The Brain Eaters. The cover is amazing. Of course, a lot of the time, the poster on these things is, is what sells it. But uh, the film is pretty good. It's um, th There's nothing eating brains, but you know, if you think of the, uh, you know, the, the brain squids, um, the, the blobs from Futurama that made people do their bidding, it's kind of the same thing here. Um, which is obviously you know, something where the other way around they probably stole a lot of it from here um, A thing crash lands um, the first person gets sort of blobified um, and uh, this, this strange creature is just making people do do, do its bidding um, it sort of spreads like a bit of a disease more people have this problem uh, it just gets worse and worse um, read some of it from the back here uh, Dr. Kettering is sent to investigate the mysterious origins and purpose of this um, strange structure that's emerged from Earth. Kettering soon discovers the shocking truth the object houses subterranean parasites. 
capable of controlling the minds of anyone by attaching themselves at their necks. Uh, the citizenry slowly infiltrated and overtaken and the town is cut off, cut off from the outside world. Kettering a small band of those left unenslaved must take on the insurmountable task of halting the menacing invasion. Um, yeah, it's got Joanna Lee from Plan 9 from Outer Space in it. In a cameo by Lemon. Oh, yes. It's almost. Uh, it's a shame it's written on the back because it was. Uh, I saw that going in there. Uh, I still forgot when I watched it, but yeah, it's got a Leonard and Nimoy cameo, and this is pre Star Trek, so I'm not too sure what the go is. It's, it's a good like five, six years before Star Trek, maybe even more, but you, you'll hear him. You won't see him. You will see him, but you won't recognize him. You'll hear him. You go, is that Leonard Nimoy? So yeah, do look out for that because that was entertaining. Brain Eaters, not not a bad little one. Um, how long was this thing? Yeah, 61 minutes. It was a very, very short little watch. Um, so yeah, there you go. The Brain Eaters, bit, bit of fun uh, 50s sci-fi there. Bit of a horror angle on that one. This one um, I got direct, but it did have a wide release, but it's out of print. I missed it at the time. Um, and ended up being on sale. So if there's still copies, they're, they're basically at the run out. What's left is only what's a shout, I think is the, is the current state. And that is uh, Attack of the Puppet People. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Um, I kind of went on, I, I added this one to the order because it was down to like uh, 12 bucks or something, 13 bucks. Um, and it just looked like it was gonna be, you know, Land of the Giants, but nasty, so. You know, if that's what I get, then that's good. Um, She's a living doll changes from a flattening expression to a terrifying reality when a certifiably deranged maniac creates a shocking device that shrinks people to foot-high figurines. There they are there, doing that, you know, fantastic special effects of just having big things. I always love that. It's just so quaint. Look at the giant telephone. Oh, my God. Good fun. Um... Uh, Mr. France is a kindly old silver-haired doll maker who turns people into living puppets. He forces his human reinventions to put on parties and sing to him. Amazing. One day, tired of being toyed with, get it? Toyed with, because they're toy. The puppets launch an attack and suddenly Mr. France finds that he better stop playing toys and start praying because the miniature Moppets, Moppets, a hell bent on revenge. That's a fantastic paragraph. Somebody had a whale of time writing that. Um, directed by cult filmmaker Bert I. Gordon, Empire of the Ants, another one with big creatures, big things. Uh, the Amazing Colossal Man. Film features an all star movie cast including John Agar from Nightbreed and the Mole People, uh, John Hoyt from When Worlds Collide, and Susan Gordon from Picture Mummy Dead. There you go. I've not seen this one before. I'm kind of excited to check it out. 79 minutes. Uh, so a fairly short film and yeah there you go that's it's in widescreen looks good I think it's just quite a cheap release nothing much going on there just inside picture sleeve there you go attack of the puppet people from 1958 that should be good fun and the last one in this pile for uh, sci-fi and horror 50s features this one literally came in yesterday brand new release very hot off the press the Edgar uh, G. Ulmer Sci-Fi Collection. I'm very happy to get this one. It's from KL Studios, Kino Lorber. You get Man from Planet X, which was uh, on Shout Factory in the past and is out of print. Goes through silly money now. And Beyond Time Barrier and The Amazing Transparent Man were on Shout Factory, uh, a cheapo four movie DVD set. I like it's called four sci-fi sci-fi movies or something. They're all squished onto one DVD. They looked okay enough but this is much better all three here are on one blu-ray but they're short films so i don't think that's going to matter uh, 71 minutes 75 58 you can cram that onto a bd50 no problems um so yeah there you go you got um man from planet x which is from 1950 it's incredibly early science fiction film that means it was probably filmed in like 49 so very early um it was very strange um the, the, I'll just going to show you. That's the that's the man from Planet X there. I don't know if it's going to come up, but um, yeah, it was um, it was kind of strange that one. I, I liked it, but it was it was pretty strange. Very cheap. Um, 
and uh, Beyond the Time Barrier, which was a full 10 years later, 1960, and The Amazing Transparent Man from 1960. Um, haven't I ever seen Transparent Man? I think I did see Amazing Transparent Man, but I have not watched Beyond the Time Barrier. So that'll be the first one I put on. Uh, cool to check on that. I'll read that one. The blurbs here is, is too long, but for Beyond the Time Barrier, in 1960, U.S. Air Force Major Wilson William Allison pilots the X-80 jet capable of speeds up to 5,000 miles an hour, reaching heights of blah, blah, blah. Upon nearly reaching outer space, Allison is unaware that the X-80's tremendous velocity has propelled him through a time barrier. Well, that'll do it. Into the post-apocalyptic year of 2024. Well, I mean, it's two years from now, but you've been watching Russia lately? It's entirely possible. Uh, he soon finds himself held captive in an underground city known as the Citadel, usually are, uh, whose inhabitants have been menaced by mutants and a deadly virus. Now, Allison must find a way to return to the past and warn humanity of impending disaster. So it's very much the time machine there. So yeah, we'll see beyond the time barriers, the one I'm particularly excited to look at. Uh, nothing too exciting there under the slip. Is there anything inside? No, very plain, very plain set, but uh, yeah, you know. It's very cheap too. It's like uh, it's like 35 Australian, so you know, same price as one movie, but uh, you get three. So yeah, happy with that. Uh, it's got the old MGM logo. Very cool. Nice little Kino set there from Edgar G. Ulmer. Hopefully, we get some more of these. On to the second pile now. The first one off the list here. I know nothing about this film. This is a I don't know 80s or or 90s classic for people that watched it at the time. Literally, I just bought it because it's number 25 in the Vestron collection. I don't even like Corey Feldman. Anyway, it's Dream a Little Dream. Um, it's the new Vestron. I've been tearing myself away from just collecting spine numbers for the sake of it. But Vestron's got me by the proverbial. They're so cheap, and I, in the end, am usually entertained, even if it's a little outside of my wheelhouse. But apparently, I need to relive the team magic of the two Corys. Uh, look, honestly... I watched Goonies, Goonies was great, but all of these other ones like License to Drive and that kind of thing, I haven't seen them, I, I missed that stuff, it didn't happen. So I don't have a nostalgia for whatever this movie is. Um, they live a stellar cast including Meredith Salinger, Victoria Jackson and veteran actors, Harry Dean Stanton, Piper Laurie, Jason Robards in this quirky comedy. High school hijinks and shoe when an oddball older couple tries a transcendental experiment to extend their lives. They accidentally mind swap with a teenager who lives down the street. We learn that youth is really wasted on the young. Oh God. Uh, look, it could be entertaining. Uh, there's probably a bunch of people that are chiming in on the comments now saying that they love this thing growing up. But yeah, look, I know absolutely nothing about it, but you know, she looks, uh, yep. So that's probably a good reason to watch it. And uh, yeah, just, there you go. Cheap Vestron thing, you get it in the sleeve. Nothing much else, else besides that. And, um, yeah, I'll take a look in here. Oh, look, you get one of them digital things I can't use because I'm in Australia. So, you know, there you go. If you want a free digital thing, go for it. Maybe you can use it. Because I certainly can't. They region lock those things, and I don't really want it anywhere. I mean, I've got the Blu-ray. Why do I need a digital thing? So, hey, if you grab it, let me know. I'm curious if anybody actually uses them. So there you go. Dream a little dream? I don't know. I'll dream about it at some point. More Dark Force. Fangs. Uh, another one I had to... Uh, Dark Force weren't shipping to Australia. USPS were not shipping to Australia. I think they've started again, but there was a good period of time there from October until March at least where USPS wasn't shipping direct. You had to use this thing called Global Post. Severin caught up with it. Diabolic caught up with it. I don't know. Dark Force never caught up with this change. They didn't seem to want to. So another one I had to get shipped with mates to a US address and then forwarded on Fangs. I really wanted the slip cover. It's embossed, it's cool. There you go, Fangs as the back of it. Uh, underneath so the AKA for the film is Holy Wednesday, which is actually a pretty cool poster there. Um, and Fangs is just one of those films I've been reading about forever and never actually watched. So I'm cool, uh, curious to check out how this one goes. Um, read a bit from the back here terrifying tale of a vengeful man and his pets. No one in town likes Snakey Bender. His name is Snake. Crotchety old man who makes a living through his beloved snakes. 
This includes loaning them out to satisfy the unusual urges of the school teacher, Ivy. She's doing with them snakes. And the object of her desire, Snakey's biggest enemies, shopkeepers. Okay. Uh, Bud and Sis. However, nothing is more important than his Wednesday night get-togethers with his best friend, Bert. When Bert, retur Bert, when Bert returns from a trip to the city, unexpectedly sporting a pretty new wife who demands all of his attention, his and Snakey's weekly ritual are put to an end. Oh, bros before hoes. That's what we're going on here. Okay. Betrayed and with vengeance in mind, Snakey begins to lure all those who wronged him up to his secluded farm for a slithery death. Hopefully we get some really cool snake death action on this one. I don't know why it's called Holy Wednesday. The unholiest night of the week. I guess we'll see. Anyway, um, Fangs, aka Holy Wednesday, slickly produced, darkly humorous horror thriller starring Les Tremaine from War of the Worlds, Bruce Kimball from Driving Massacre, Alice Nunn from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and one of the few film scores by electronic music pioneer Susan Siani. Uh, so there you go, 2K scan of the uh, uncut Holy Wednesday version from the 35mm OCN with extensive colour correction, so it should look good. Alternative Fangs opening titles and uh, gallery and all kinds of other bits and bobs. So there you go. Get to check out Fangs finally. I've always been kind of curious about it. And uh, it's the uncut Holy Wednesday version. So there you go. If you've seen it, do let me know what you think of it. Fangs. Next up. This was like one of the biggies to, to make the jump from DVD to Blu-ray. Uh, everyone was waiting and waiting and waiting. We finally have Sword and the Sorcerer, not only on Blu-ray, Blu but 4K. Um, yeah, this is one of those Albert Pyatt films that is very much revered in the, well, Sword and Sorcery film fans, and one of the big ones. So yeah, now Sword and the Sorcerer, finally on uh, HD and Ultra HD. I mean, that. I know a lot of the companies are doing that now. Uh, Shout is doing a lot of them. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome has really picked it up. Still, I don't play them. I just play the Blu-ray, but um, you know, it's there if people want it. Uh, meet Talon, a daring mercenary who conquers castles and dungeons alike with the lethal three-bladed sword. Uh, there it is there, which is very cool. Take a look at the uh, inside art, which is a bit more familiar. Uh, the old DVD, the Australian DVD at least, had that artwork. Um, when Talon learns that he is the prince of a kingdom controlled by an evil sorcerer, he is thrust, thrust into the wildest fight of his life. Can Talon rescue the beautiful princess and slay the warlock, or will he fall prey to black magic of medieval mayhem? Uh, we've got Lee Horsley, uh, Kathleen Bella, Simon McCornidale, and Richard Mole from House uh, in this action-packed adventure saga. So UHD and a Blu-ray both have the same 4K scan, a brand new scan made last year. Audio commentary with uh, Albert Pyon, which is really cool. Um, wonder if that yeah, it's a new audio commentary and that's actually a good thing to get he's not been too well uh, I believe he's got MS and it's starting to really affect him um, I think it's MS anyway <clears throat> new interviews with actress Kathleen Bella um, special makeup effects artist uh, interview trailers from hell Marshall Harvey on the sword of the sorcerer theatrical trailers TV spots you get all kinds of cool stuff I'm just happy that this thing is now on Blu-ray and 4K for those that want it, which is really cool. So there you go, Sword and the Sorcerer, nice tasty upgrade there from Shout Factory, very cool. Next one, oh man, I was told not to get this. Extra the Mutilator said, don't get it, you'll regret it. Here I am anyway. I, I, look, it's going to happen, Slash Dance and Hollywood's New Blood. It's called Slash Dance why I had to get it sorry <laughs> there's the inner slash dance has it got the uh... yeah no it doesn't okay I thought it might have the reverse film on the reverse side anyway slash dance um, it's a vinegar syndrome slip and I, I think they help with the scans but this is through uh, was it culture shock I think they're relatively new um, I'll read a little bit here. We get beautiful dancers are being brutally killed by the Van Slake Theatre. Is it the weird brothers who run the theatre? Is it the perverted stage manager or vengeful ghost? 
bombshell detective Tori Raines must go undercover as a dancer to find the killer, or become the next victim to see all the sexy dancers and sleazy characters in lurid colour. So there you go. <laughs> Presentation of Slash Dance is an HD up-res from the original One Inch Video Master. Yeah, so these things are shot on uh, shot on video. Hollywood's New Blood is a HD up-res from the best available video source, so it's gonna look average. Film elements for both films are lost. Maybe it wasn't shot on video, maybe they just don't have good stuff to, to find. You know, there's the inner, there's the disc. Uh, coincidentally, a friend of mine watched uh, Hollywood's New Blood before this Blu-ray came out and he just watched it online and said it was the worst slasher he had ever seen. And then I've also been told that slash dance is terrible, so I expect utter pain from both of these. But man, what a great slip and that boob tube. Just <sighs> don't know what I'm doing with my life sometimes. This one's exciting. Uh, I don't know anything about it, but the fact that it's a um, it's a Blu-ray release of this film is really cool. This is Cain and Abel, uh, which is a, a Philippine film. It's actually in Tagalog with uh, English subs. Filmed by Lino Broca. Very cool. Vinny Syndrome slip. But the film is through, uh, what is it? Carney, I guess. That's what they call it. Carney, just Carney, K-A-N-I. Carney Releasing. So there's the inside. There's all the back there with all the information. Um, I'll read a little bit about it. Uh, first, Firstborn Lorenz. Philip Salvador toils the land by buffalo, while Ellis, Christopher de Leon, the apple of his mother's eye, is given a university education in Manila. When the latter returns to the family's hacienda with metropolitan fiancé in tow, Carmi Martin, the domineering Senora Pina, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa? Wow. There's an actress called Mona Lisa. Amazing. Immediately disapproves. Looking to reassert her influence, she asks her youngest to name his inheritance. Ellis claims the land, which sparks a here we go a family feud, inviting tragedy and boils over into an all-out fili what filial 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 war. I don't know what that word is. Filial filial war. It's a war. Well, anyway. It's uh, written by Ricardo Ricky Lee, directed by Lino Brocker. The Hills are masterpieces such as Waited But Not Found Wanting, Manila in the Claws of Light, and In Siang. So I'm not familiar with those those Philippine films, but this is from 1982. Actually quite long at 112 minutes, but um, has apparently has nods to 1971 Straw Dogs. Um, I was just so curious about this that, that this company is releasing a, a Tagalog language Philippines film, uh, which is you know, a pretty brave thing to be doing, honestly, from an American company. So they've gone all out because of the Vinegar Syndrome connection, helping them with all the bells and whistles there. Nice booklet. Take a look at that. There's the booklet front. Uh, yeah, stuff about the film and the people in it. Quite detailed. Stuff about the director. Uh, synopsis there on the back. Yeah. So, I really don't know what to get on this. It, it was just so amazing, I think, really, that they were releasing a Tagalog language Philippines production. So, there you go. Kane and Abel. Yeah, see how we go. From a new, um, the new, it's, it's brand new label. This is like number two in their series from. Uh, from Carney Releasing, who have their own website, Carney, K A N I hyphen releasing.com. Yeah, number two. I don't know what number one was. So there you go, Kane and Abel. Next one. Oh man. I love Vinegar Syndrome, but it's their VSA line. That's the stuff that's just. It's just killing me. It's so good. We now have Talents of the Eagle on Blu ray in a ridiculous, like. Oh, hard box slipcover thing. This film is fantastic. It's always been fantastic, and watching it on this, like watching it in widescreen for the first time, amazing. HD, absolutely glorious film. Uh, Billy Blanks, uh, Jal Jalal Murphy, I think was also the director on this one. Uh, no, Michael Kennedy. But Jalal's always involved in the production, at least in some way, producer or something along those lines. Um, James Hong who is not in it as a cameo. It's proper James Hong being a bad guy, and it's he, he's chewing the scenery. He's got a lovely moustache, throwing the 
sort of coat slash cape over his shoulder. It's fantastic. Uh, Priscilla Barnes, Harry Mock, Matthias Hughes playing, of course, a henchman because that's what he does. And Mike Chow, he was in this. He was really good. Um, it's it's buddy cop thing, uh, you know, take down the drug dealer standard plot. But freaking hell, this is good. Really good action sequences, uh, fight sequences. Like Billy Blanks is is kicking ass, literally in this one. So is Jalal. He's a, he's a good martial artist. Um, yeah, and like I said, James Hong just absolutely inhaling that scenery. Like you can see him. Oh, oh great! He's just chewing it, literally chewing it. Um, just buy it. It's it's yeah. It's got to be one of the best VSA releases. They've been doing so many good ones though. I did TC2000 also with uh, these two. Um, get a poster in there. They've done Action USA. And, um, oh, so many good ones. Poster, it's double sided, it's the same artwork as the box. Um, and yeah, the restoration on this, insane. Because all of these things have had plenty of DVD releases and like, you know, cheap Poundland UK DVD releases and American DVD releases in the, you know, in the early 2000s, but. They've always just been you know, simple, full-screen things, you know, like image entertainment stuff. They just did essentially a laser disc on a DVD. So to get this stuff jumping into widescreen and then on Blu-ray is just amazing. Um, absolutely fantastic. I yeah, I can't I can't rate this one highly enough. You get uh, the new scan 4K from the OCN uh, commentary track from the producer. Yeah, he is producer slash actor Jalal Mehe. Bloods, Blades and Blanks and Making of Doco. Watch that. It's a 30-minute documentary interviewing um, Billy Blanks, Jalal and Matthias Hughes. And it's all modern stuff now. They're talking about the production and it's got a fantastic little part at the end where Matthias is talking about how he misses Blockbuster going in, renting VHS and then renting DVDs. And it ends on this nice little this piece where he's just saying, you know, it means something to hold a physical film and then it cuts to the credits. Like, man... Hashtag physical media matters. Absolutely. Matthias, you're on, on, the, on the money there. Uh, original trailer, limited edition to 5,000. That's the thing with VSAs. And VS in general, when they do limited editions, it's almost back to the old school Anchor Bay days of like, limited edition, 10,000 copies. But man, people are buying them. This won't last more than a few months. They'll sell them all. It's a great movie, Talons of the Eagle. Fantastic stuff. Got two 88 Asian films and two Eureka Asian films to add to the collection. Quickly take a look at these ones. I haven't watched these ones yet. This is Monkey Kung Fu number 31 in the uh, Shaw Brothers line. I love the artwork on this one, absolutely fantastic. And this one is starring uh, Ching Su Tung and directed by John Law Ma. So, yeah, haven't seen this film, so I don't know a great deal about it. Um, but Ma, from director Ma Lo, which is John Law Ma, I guess. Uh, who did Shaolin Thief and starring Si Tung Ching from the Shaolin Boxer, a fast-moving wuxia classic from the legendary Shaw Brothers studio. Prisoner Ching, given half of a wooden keepsake by a one-eyed master uh, about to be executed, he breaks out of prison to go in search of the other half to discover its purpose. However, on his quest, he is pursued by a gang leader who will also stop at nothing to find out its secrets. So there you go. Uh, embroiling mystical promise, an adventurous journey, and a search for truth in a winding storyline. Monkey Kung Fu, aka Stroke of Death, uniquely satisfying in late 70s, delved into the magical world of martial arts Hong Kong cinema. Uniquely satisfying is a nice sentence. There is the uh, picture on the inside. Try ahead, don't appear to have flipped, so let's do that together now, because I do enjoy to flip these to the original uh, artwork inside. Apparently I missed that out with these. There we go there. So there's the, presumably the theatrical poster. Uh, it's a Hong Kong poster, I presume. Looks like it would be. So there you go, very nice. We get a poster and we get a booklet, which is a very 70s font on that. That's fantastic, look at that. That's absolutely amazing. Take a quick look at that. We get a very nice hand-drawn picture there. Going Ape Hong Kong style, get it? Monkey Kung Fu, Going Ape. Fantastic, a look back at the film. Some posters there, some more information on these films. Quite a detailed little booklet. Some uh, lobby cards, photos. Looks to be a good one, this Monkey Kung Fu. If you've seen this one, let me know uh, where I should bump this one up in the queue with some of the other short films I haven't got to yet. So yeah, very cool, Monkey Kung Fu. They're starting to do these slips kind of glossy too. 
And what I, I think I said this last time as well, for the newcomers, you can just keep it like that. But if you are an old school guy and you're trying to keep the numbers, so there you go, 31 in the line. You can hold it this way or you can hold it that way. It's just very thoughtful of them. And this one is uh, number 32, Shaolin Mantis. Love the uh, drawing there. Very cool artwork on that one. Again, another one I haven't seen, but Extra the Mutilator told me if it's got Shaolin in the title, it's good. So I will uh, take his word for it. Direct from the golden age of Hong Kong martial arts cinema comes Shaolin Mantis, another fast-paced fight fest from the mighty Shaw Brothers studio. Uh, scholar Wei Fong, uh, David Xiang, uh, is hired by the Emperor to infiltrate a clan of rebellious Ming loyalists. His mission goes adrift when he falls in love with the clan's leader granddaughter and his plans are discovered. Uh, legendary director and star Lo Ka Leung from Spiritual Boxer and 36 Chambers of Shaolin. Shaolin Mantis is another superlative entry in this never-ending showcase of 70s martial arts productions. An absolute must for collectors and fans, etc. Um, yeah, so you get uh, the Kung Fu Bob design here again. And we'll take a quick look inside. Another one I've not flipped. We'll do it again together, shall we? I love doing these things with you guys. Flip it over. And we get... Oh, this one's cool. I like this one. Just... Uh, Give me one more moment. There you go. That's Shaolin Mantis. Again, presumably the original uh, Hong Kong poster artwork. I really like that one. Very, very nice indeed. Inside we get some reproduction lobby cards, which will be very cool. Pop that back in there. And we get the poster again with the Kung Fu Bomb artwork. And uh, yeah, no booklet on this one, but. Plenty of special features. HD Master from the 35mm OCN in 235 to 1. English LPCM Mono, that's as uncompressed as you're going to get. And Mandarin with newly translated English subs, so best of both worlds. Audio commentary with Asian cinema experts Mike Leder and Arn Vernema. Audio commentary with Asia cinema expert Frank Zheng. Complicated Families, David West on Shaolin Mantis. Uncle Tian Chung, an interview with John Chung, and US trailer, The Deadly Mantis, Hong Kong trailer, Reversible Sleeve, etc. So there you go. Another very nice one in this line from 88. So yeah, if you've seen Shaolin Mantis, let me know what you think of this one. Very cool. Uh, off to Eureka now. This one, um, Eureka I order directly, usually from them. They don't provide a tracking number, but you order it and they send it so that it arrives around about release date. Um, even internationally, it just you just look in the mailbox, oh, it's here, and then you go look it up and go, oh, it's, it's released today. I don't know, they time it fairly well. My first copy of this got lost in the post. Still hasn't shown. Um, I sent them a message and they say, just, you know, if you can wait another week, so I did. They were very happy then when I, when I replied back and said, it hasn't shown. They said, we'll send you another one. The other one showed up in seven days, and they like I replied, let them know that it arrived. They said, "Wow, that was fast." So, um, good service from Eureka. If something goes missing, they'll fix you up. And that is uh, Skinny Tiger, Fatty Dragon. Um, so, yes, happy to get this. If the other one ever shows up, well, I guess that's a present for somebody. But um, it, uh, yeah, the, the second one showed up. I, I did check this was the second one because of the the date stamps on the envelope. Um, but yeah, if they sent it with tracking, then I would know these things. But anyway, Samo Hung, uh, classic this one, uh, also with Karl Marker. Um, very busy artwork on that one. I'm not too sure if I like it too much. I kind of prefer this one. That's that's a bit more fun, I think. Very fun. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, Reef in the back, Samo Hung invokes the spirit of Bruce Lee in this high energy action tribute, playing a cop obsessed with the physical legacy of the little dragon. Teaming up with the infamous Skinny Tiger, um, which is Karl Marker from Aces Go Places movies. Samo becomes the larger half of a luck star crime fighting duo, forced to fight a running battle against a crime syndicate of triad gangsters. Love the buddy films, buddy cop. Brilliantly choreographed fight sequences, infectious physical comedy, it's Samo. Uh, this tour de force comedy adventure showcases incredible action tributes to the films of Bruce Lee. Skinny Tiger Fatty Dragon makes its UK debut on Blu-ray. This is a great film. I watched it on uh, Hong Kong Relations TV ages ago. I, I love too that's got the old Mia Entertainment logo on the back there. Must be a sub-license. Which is really nice just to see that there. Um, Cantonese mono, English dubbed, uh, mono in 5.1 if you want. Uh, optional English subtitles. Newly translated for this release. 
uh, feature length audio commentary by Asian film expert Frank Jen, who was on the 88 film released back there. Martial artist actor Robert Bobby Samuels uh, as well on that. New feature length audio commentary by action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arn Vernema, who were also on one of those ones there. Interesting that they're borrowed between uh, Eureka and 88. That's, that's interesting. New audio interview with stuntman martial artist Mark Houghton or Houghton. Uh, archival interview with uh, director Law Car Wing. Uh, archival interview with actor, stuntman, and action choreographer Ridley Sue. Deleted scene, which is cool. Uh, and the new artwork on the box, which, yeah, you know, it's okay, but I do prefer this guy. Um, and the booklets inside we'll take a look at. Multi disc set, so there's, uh, there's the film. And limited edition bonus disc, which is where all the features go. So if you wait too long and you miss the original editions, the they reissue them without the slip and without the bonus disc. That's usually what happens, and without the booklet. So if you just want the film, you can just wait. But I don't think they cost any different. It might be like a pound or two in it, so you may as well just get in there early. There you go. Stuff there about the film, about Samo, footnotes. Oh, there's some modern photos there, some old photos, modern photos. There you go. That's nice to see them all there. Grey head, Samo. Very nice. So yeah, nice Eureka. Uh, release here of Skinny Tiger, Fatty Dragon. Lovely upgrade. Very happy to have that. And this one, which I had on Hong Kong Legends DVD, but I actually didn't get to watch this one in time. Uh, Odd Couple. Um, this one is, well, I'll read from the back here, widely considered the greatest classical weapons movie ever made. That's a big thing to be saying. Starring Samo and Law Kawing, also directing this time, and Brian Beardy, it's in commas, Lung, uh, Luang Ka Yan from Dreadnought and the Victim, a classic tale of rivalry and vengeance. Very cool. Two aging masters of the spear and sword engage in epic mountaintop battle every 10 years. The outcome invariably ends in a draw. Realizing that neither of them will ever outclass the other, they agree to take on a younger student to tra and train them to champion their cause, thus putting an end to the long-standing rivalry. Man, that's just, talk about, you know, sins of the father that's just that's almost disgraceful that kind of, but anyway whatever i guess he chose to be a younger student there you go showcasing some of the most intricate and explosive weapons choreography ever seen this masterpiece remains a quintessential classic from the golden age of hong kong cinema blu-ray debut yeah so i'll check this one out soon i think because i don't know uh i never actually got to watch that dvd um you get the new artwork by Darren Wheeling. I like that one's quite cool. Cantonese mono, optional English dubbed. New subtitles, new audio commentary by the same crew as there before. Um, and another new commentary by also the same crew, so two different ways to listen to it. Archival interview, interview with the same director, and also with Brian Beardy Lewin, Ka Yan. Trailer and booklet, take a look inside. I did flip this one, there you go, that one's nice. I do dig that, that's fun. Love his face, he's very, uh, very fun, very fun poster. Uh, one disc release, I like that. Two swords with the, uh, the flare there, very nice. Quick look at the booklet, there you go. This one looks like a lot of fun. Lots of cool info, old photos, lobby cards. That's the Hong Kong Legends DVD, it looked like that. But yes, I ne did never get to uh, get any time to watch that one, so there you go. Oh, I like the picture on the back. Very nice. So there you go, that's the Odd Couple. Another one, if you've seen it, let me know what you think of it. Uh, but I'm excited to be checking it out. And there you go, Odd Couple. And lastly, we've got three new Euro Crime Media Book Blu-rays out of Germany. I could not contain the Eurocrime goodness, so I had to get out the bottle of rare J&B whiskey just to make sure I was covered here. The first one here we've got is called uh, Cross Shot. This one, uh, yeah, La Lega Violenta Della Squadra Anticriminine, whatever. Cross Shot is the name of this film. And it stars uh, John Saxon, there he is there, and also the uh, very, very cool Lee J. Cobb. Big fan of Lee J. Cobb. Um, I know him basically only in his later years, uh, mostly from uh, Exorcist 3, 
He is amazing. Oh, no, sorry, no, Exodus 3. Exorcist 1. He was in Exorcist 1. Um, he's really good in that, particularly in the extended cut. You get more scenes of him in, in The Exorcist, but he's such a good detective in that film. I really wanted to see more of him uh, of that period. I know he's been doing... He was doing films a lot longer. Um, and this is end of his career kind of stuff, but um, I was happy to see that he was in this film. So, yeah. Um, and John Saxon here. So this film is a really, really good... Um, standard euro crime stuff of john saxon just you know he's a detective um foiling uh crimes and uh kind of gets uh in the way of uh, lee cobb that's playing the bad guy there he is there he's playing sort of the, the mob boss he's really really good very menacing in this and john saxon's just being john saxon so i really enjoyed this one quite brutal quite um uh quite violent one it's even got violenta in the title there Let's take a look inside. Now, it's a German media book, so nothing's in English, but they did, which I've never seen actually in a German media book, they do have one paragraph here in English, uh, which is talking about the um, musician, uh, yeah, Pierre, Piero Pintucci, uh, musician, composer, arranger, and producer who did not make his living uh, with film music. He had composed, produced music for singers, blah, 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 blah. It's talking about him um, and the... What, the music of the films? Yeah, composed little for film and television, only a handful of feature films in the 70s, such as, etc, etc. But anyway, that's also the German title there, Der Killer der Apocalypse. Um, I love that picture there, all the, very cool. A uh, little poster. But then, unfortunately, yeah, it's media book time, so I can look at a lot of things, but I can't read any of it. It's all in German. It's very nice pictures. So, yeah, that's one of the alternative car, uh, artworks. There's like four or five artworks you can get through this one. Um, and not sure what variant number I had on this, but this is through a company called Cineploit. I think I see your name, Simit Cineploit. Um, and they're doing some really, really good releases. The transfer on this is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, and I got it through Strange Vice in the UK. I just felt like buying some Euro crime, and uh, this is Stelvio Marci is the director of this one, and I couldn't be happy with it. So it's in uh, German, or it's in Italian or English, with German or English subtitles. So you get everything you need on here. You can watch it in Italian language with English subtitles. You just watch it English dub. I actually watched this English dub, and I thought that the dub was really good because uh, Lee Cobb does, and John Saxon, I think, but definitely Lee Cobb is doing his own voice. So for me, this film is an English speaking film. Um, so yeah, really good one, cross shot, enjoyed that. Second one to take a look at here, another from Cineploit. This one is called um, The Great Kidnapping. Uh, out of the two, I've watched, there's three of these, out of the, I've watched two of them and this is my favorite of them actually at this point. Um, this one was, uh, well, who do we have been starring in this one? Um, yeah, Enrico Maria, Maria Salerno, who's this bloke here, uh, but it's also got Lee Cobb in it. Um, but his uh, his role in this one was quite quite diminished. He's not he's not a full piece of this film, um, but uh, yeah, it's still it's still nice to see him in here. He's just not in it very often. I think it might have actually been his last film before he passed away. I think I read that this he he filmed this and then didn't actually get to see its release. But anyway, this um, La Polizia Star Aguade, great kidnapping. All these uh, rich, basically rich kids were being kidnapped, and um, uh, Enrico Maria Salerno is is set about to work uh, to re resolve this crime. Um, Lee Cobb is you see him at the start as being a detective that's just resigned but he helps sort of like you know provides a bit of direction uh to um to, to Salerno's character of you know where to try next and maybe do this and maybe do that um really fun one lots of action again some lots of twists very Eurocrime lots of J&B enjoy this one a lot again you get another piece there it's in English um this Roberto Inficelli, the son of a film producer and director, etc, etc. I could let you read that if you pick it up, but there you go, that's another cover art you can get, if you get one of the variants. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, just nice pictures and language I can't read. 
Syndicate, I've got that one on uh, just DVD, but there is a Blu-ray. Um, some nice photos there. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And come on, turn, turn. There you go, there's the disc. I'm not sure if I showed the disc on the other one, but there's the disc there. La Plesia Star Aguadere. Aguada, I don't know. Um, another one on Cineploid. And it's in 235 to 1. Ratio in German, Italian, English audio with German or English subtitles. It has a featurette on Mike Malloy, uh, Mike Malloy on El, uh, Lee Cobb. I don't think I've watched it. I'm not sure what language it was in. If it's in English, I should go pop it back in and check it out. So yeah, another one. Really cool. The Great Kidnapping. And the third and last one here. This one is called Killer Cop or La Polizia Hale Mani Legate. My Italian just... Phew. Of course I don't know any Italian. Killer Cop. Beautiful cover artwork on this one. You can get a few variants again. And I haven't watched this one yet, so I can't tell you too much about it. Can't tell you anything about it. It's got Claudio Casolini, Arthur Kennedy, um, and directed by Luciano Ercoli. That's about all I know about it. I did read the blurb and it did sound like very interesting And when I was picking these films up. I wanted to get uh, at least three to make the shipping worthwhile. These are the three I picked. There's some more I'd like to go back and get. Lee Cobb, not in this one, but you know, can't win them all. Um, so yeah, Killer Cop. I, I haven't watched this one yet. I, I can't comment on it, and it's got nothing English on the back for me to read. Um, it does have a little. Well, it does have a few bits here that are all in English. This is all in English. Yeah, this whole section's in English about uh, about the characters and the uh, the actors. So Claudio Castellini, Arthur Kennedy, Franco Fabrizi, Giovanni Cian Friglia, Friglia, and Luc uh, Luciano Ercoli. Um, yeah, so there you go, this poster. That's cool artwork on that. Again, now we're inside. We're all in German, no idea what's going on. Nice pictures. And there's the disc there. So yeah, Killer Cop. Uh, if you've seen Killer Cop, let me know about this one. Because it'll probably go on soon anyway. And there you go. That was the update. Let's take a swig of the old JMB. Oh yeah, that hit the spot what I needed after a long day of reviewing, not reviewing, showing off my movies. Anyway, we got there in the end. Should be less than an hour this time, hopefully. We will see. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out that thing, that thing, and I'll see you all next time.